Retro Gamers and Top here from Retro Games Collector with a bit of a pickups and, ch and channel update video. Um, just back off my Ollie Bombs to uh, Devon, and um, yesterday, the day after I got back off my Ollie Bombs, I uh, went up to Barnsley to the South Yorkshire. Let me get this right South Yorkshire uh, Retro Gaming and Collectibles Fair, I do believe it was called. Um, I say event, it was a bit of a non-event to be honest, um, nobody turned up, <laughs> loads of really really good sellers there, uh, a ton of really good sellers, um, some fantastic stuff on the stalls, um, I tweeted about it, sent a few pictures out saying oh this is going to be a great event, doors opened, four or five people walked in, that was all that was waiting to go in, I mean if anybody's been to a retro event, usually there's a big queue of people waiting to come in because they want the bargains, they want to get there, go around quickly, check out all the stores, get all, grab all the bargains first. About five people walked in. And I bet if the busiest it got all day was about between 12 and 1, and I bet if there was 30 people walking around at once in there, that was about all there was. And most of the day, there was far less than that walking around. It was it was just, we were just waiting for four o'clock to come along, along so we could pack up, basically. My mate Dana Meddins took me up. He was kind enough to let me have a bit of his table. He, I didn't know about this until um, just before I went off on holiday. Um, he told me about it. Um, Two to UK had told him about it, so we blame him Two to UK for this. <laughs> It's all, it's all Tootie's fault. It's all your fault, Stu. We're blaming you. We pick the events in, in future, not you. Um, yeah, uh, we, we met up with Stu, uh, Tootie UK, um, while we were there. And uh, he's a great guy. Uh, it was great to meet him. I've obviously been watching his channel for quite a while now. Um, and it was great to see him in, in the flesh, uh, so to speak. Um, yeah, and we basically we could we couldn't wait for four o'clock to come along so we could actually get the hell out of there and get back home because it was so slow. Uh, it was nice meeting some of the guys there, great chatting to them, um, but uh, yeah, it was just a bit of a non-event really. Um, we, from what I can see, the guy just hadn't advertised it at all. He basically expected us lot to turn turn up, pay our money, have a table, and he didn't want to actually make any effort whatsoever himself or pay for any sort of advertising. He didn't really even need to pay for advertising, for crying out loud. Um, one of the reasons for this video is I'm celebrating the fact that I've got 50,000 Twitter followers now because if YouTube's pretty new to me, Twitter's always been my thing um, and I've got up to 50,000 people on there so yes thank you very much folks if any of you out there subscribe, um, follow me on Twitter then I thank you immensely, uh, never thought I'd ever get to 50,000 people but uh, back to the story. Um, if he'd have even reached out to, to people like me, I could have tweeted it out. 50,000 gamers would have heard about it and we'd have had a lot more chance of actually selling things while we were there. I sold absolutely nothing. Dana sold a few things, but it wasn't didn't even cover his petrol, I don't think. Um, I mean, hats off to Dana. He, he's a great guy. Fantastic guy to go to these events with. Um, he was kind enough to drive up as well. I mean, he's let me, let, you know, let me have some of his table. He drove us up, um, and uh, you know, it's him that should be knocked off more than more than I. I, I got a free ride really. Um, that got, you know, Dana paid for the table. He turned up, and you know, nobody had done any legwork and. Uh, it was just a wasted day. It's a waste of our day. It's a waste of petrol. It's a you know, it's not only driving up there two hours there, two hours back. It's it's loading the car up. It's finding all the stuff. It's getting all the stuff together to take up there in the first place. It's it's time, and you know, people don't want to be spending time doing something like that to find out that it hasn't even been advertised and nobody's going to turn up and walk through the door. I mean, for God's sake. Yeah, we were a little bit annoyed. We laughed it off a bit. Uh, you know, as you do, but 
Um, at the end of the day, I think underneath we were a little bit annoyed at the end of uh, yesterday. But saying that, you know, it was great. Got to meet a few. Um, a YouTubing legend um, in Stu. And uh, it's always a great day out with Dana anyway, regardless of where you go. He's a great, great guy. Um, yeah, check out their channels anyway. Uh, 2 to UK and uh, Danestat83. Um, I'll put the details down below. Both great guys. Um, a few pickups. Talking of Danestat. He um, gave me this yesterday uh, for my collection. I collect Gears of War stuff. Hadn't got the original Gears of War um, limited collector's edition. Which this is comes in a nice um, tin, a really nice tin. Lovely that is. Um, and inside there's a book with artwork and um, a brief, um, a bit of a synopsis of the uh, Gears of War story um, in there. Comes also with a, a limited edition bonus disc. Um, I've yet to see what's on that, um, but I should be checking that out later. That will go nicely alongside all my other Gears of War uh, discs. Right, find somewhere to put that. Um, I've been at it again with the ZX81. Um, my mate Will uh, got me this number painter. Quite a difficult one to get hold of so I'm glad I've got that one. Um, these are eBay buyers uh, Planet of Death uh, Adventure A. I've got Adventure B Inca Curse I did have all these years ago and uh, in a fit of craziness sold them um, as you do you regret it later and you just want them back again wanted them back ever since seen them on eBay going for reasonable prices so I bought them uh, a um, sealed spelling um, and uh, Escape from Manhattan uh, by uh, CRL uh, I, love, I love the artwork on these um, all hand drawn artwork. Nice. Um, two to UK. Uh, got a sale out to me yesterday. Uh, uh, missile Bandai Missile Invader handheld. I love these uh, 80s handhelds, so happy to get that. Add that to the collection. A uh, couple of charity shop buyers, a couple of PSP games I grabbed. Both complete. I think there was something like 50 pence each. Can't leave them there for that. All of them. And um, I collect Beyond uh, software, especially the big box stuff. Um, so I picked up Spy vs. Spy off a guy on one of the Facebook groups. One of the, I think it was Sinclair for sale. Could have been. Yeah, I think it was. Another eBay boy, which I couldn't resist. There's a bunch of software for the Spectrum that regularly fetches, I mean, crazy, crazy prices. It's educational software. Uh, as you know, we all bought our Spectrums because we wanted to do our own work on them and not play games. There's nothing to do with games, believe me. You, you know, we just bought our Spectrums for playing, uh, not playing, sorry, I said playing again. Doing educational things. That's what we told our mums and dads anyway. And this educational software, obviously, because we were lying, didn't actually get bought. But it was produced anyway. And nowadays it fetches crazy, crazy prices. Well, I can't afford it because, you know, I think the last I've, I've done about it on my, uh, done a couple of articles on my website about it. The last few times um, the Macmillan Macman titles have been up for sale. They've gone for two, three hundred pound a piece. I mean, you're only talking. Um, a cardboard box with a cassette and a, and a two page, a four page leaflet in it. That's, that's all, all they are. Um, and they go for absolute mad money. So the next best thing for me would be the advertising leaflets for it. Equally as rare, um, but I got them for a reasonable, I'd say reasonable price. More than I would normally want to pay for them. Um, but, uh, you know, within the realms of sanity. So uh, these are, this is advertising. In fact, I think the thing is a press pack. I think it was sent out to the press because it comes in this nice Sinclair folder. That Sinclair's sort of embossed and silver. 
as you can see, shiny. Um, really nice condition, but I think it's a press pack, and I say that because it's got that in that mint, absolutely mint condition. That's just a standard sort of leaflet, but it's also got these what we used to call in the printing industry uh, wet proofs. Um, they are die sub. Um, Dye sublimation um, prints of the artwork for the front covers of these educational titles. Um, and as such, I would think these were given out to the press so that they could reproduce these from these die sub uh, prints. They're really nice quality. And they show you all the very expensive, hard to get titles. Actually, some of those on there aren't magnets, isn't um, probably all the rest on there are quite difficult to get out and quite expensive. You're talking 100 to 300 pound a piece for these nowadays. Um, these not so, no, none of those are uh, expensive titles to get. It comes with a full set of um, those. That, those are the really expensive ones. Those MacMan ones at the bottom there. Um, they're really hard to get. And the uh, single jewel case uh, educational titles as well. Um, a pot as as well as that, and what this is what makes me think it was a press pack is they've got um, previous reviews printed out in here. There's a, um, a review from ZX Computing in uh, June, July '85 in there. So they obviously want that to sort of prove that it was um, reviewed and also a set of letters, just a, a sort of an overview of what those titles are, um, explaining it all. So yeah, note to editors, yeah, it was, it was a press pack by the looks of it, because it actually says there, note to editors. Um, so in the days before internet press releases, this is what they used to send out to folks um, uh, that worked at magazines and newspapers um, so that they could get their stuff advertised and reviewed. So there we have it. Uh, quite a rare little bundle, that. Um, you don't see those come up very often. I have seen that come up by itself, and that in itself can be very expensive. I have never seen the press pack come up before, um, so I'm happy to have that as part of the collection. as something a little bit rare, a little bit unusual um, to add to it. So um, thank you very much for watching. That's about it for now, I do believe. Let's just check. I haven't missed anything in my usual disorganised manner. No, I haven't missed anything. That's all uh, for this episode. Um, like and subscribe if you do indeed like. Um, and until next time, guys, keep it retro.